Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here and today we find ourselves in a club. But not just any club, it's the detective club. Well you'll need to prove yourself as a real detective. You'll need to analyze all the evidence, listen to the witnesses, and try to find the lying conspirator among your group. Detective Club is for 4-8 to eight players, plays in 45 minutes, is for ages 8 and up, and published by iGames. It comes from the same designer of one of my favorite games, Mysterium. It mixes together the beauty of the illustrations within Mysterium, but mixes it with the social deduction aspects found in popular games like Spyfall. Today, I'll be doing a rule school where I'll teach you how to set up and play the game so that you don't have to read the rule book yourself. Now, I have placed timestamps below me in the description of this video just in case you want to jump to a specific section of the rules. Well, let's get started. Detective Club is a party game for four to eight players, which uses original, unique, beautiful artwork for you to play cards to describe different words. Each round, one player will come up with a secret word that everyone will know except one player. That player is the conspirator. One card at a time, players will be playing cards that most represent that word, but remember one player doesn't know it. And after everyone's played two cards, the word is revealed and players go around explaining why their cards match that word. Then players will vote as to which player they think was the one that didn't know the word and was the conspirator. For example, which pair of cards here do you think that player did not know that the word was beach? And if the conspirator gets enough votes, they're caught and the players that voted for them score points. Otherwise, the conspirator gains points if they're not caught, so does the active player that came up with the word. Detective Club blends creative card play along with social deduction and hidden identity elements to make this a great family game. To set up, each player is going to pick the color that they want, take the player board of that color, and the magnifying glass token. If you're playing with less than 8 players, any colors not selected can be removed and placed back in the box. You won't need it that game. Once each player has taken their color of player marker and board, these evidence cards will be shuffled up and 6 cards will be dealt to every player, and those cards can be looked at by those players, but you don't want to show them to anyone else. Next, a player is randomly selected the active player. They'll get the pencil, which is the active player marker. There are a total of seven notebooks in the game. You'll use one less the amount of players. In this case, we're gonna play a five player game, so we're only going to use four of the notebooks. You always use the amount of players minus one. So in that five player game, we'll use four notebooks and all the rest of them can be returned back to the box. Then take all the scoring tokens and separate them by values and put them off to the side as a supply. You'll be using this to give people points at the end of each round. The object of the game is to have the most points at the end. Points will be given each round and you'll get these differently depending on what role you are that round. Since everyone secretly has six cards at the beginning of the game, the active player is going to secretly look at their cards. These would be in their hand and they're going to try to come up with a clue that they will end up playing two cards this round that have to do with that clue. So let's say we're looking at these cards and the active player selects beach for the clue. And once they have that clue, they're going to place the first card that they want to represent that just outside the number one on their board. And anytime you play a card in this game, you'll always draw a replacement one from the top of the draw deck because you'll always have six cards to choose from. They're then going to grab these notebooks and they're going to write the secret word on all of these except one. For that one, they'll write nothing. So they're doing this secretly. And if you like, you could put the game box or something in front of you so that people can't see what you're writing. You'll notice one of them has no word. The other three have the same word. That is the clue for this round. Then those notebooks will be placed face down like this and shuffled so that nobody knows which ones have the word and which single one does not. And if you don't want to use the paper notebooks, you can use the app called Club Beeper. You can find it in the iOS store and the Android Play Store. It allows a player to create a game and they'll be able to select the amount of players and they'll be able to select their color. It'll also give a specific code that other players will use to join so all the players around the table can see whether they have the word or not without using the paper notebooks. Then each of those notebooks is dealt out secretly face down to each of the other players that are not the active player. Then each player will secretly look at their notebook to see if they have a word on there or not. 
if they do have a word there, they are a detective and they're going to be using this word to try to help them guide which cards they're going to play down this round. But this is always done secretly. Now, if you're the one that does not have a word on your book, you are the conspirator. You're going to be trying to look at what other people are playing on their cards and try to blend in by playing cards that are similar. And the conspirator and the active player who came up with the word this round are working together because they're both trying to make sure that the conspirator doesn't get caught by the detectives. Once all the players have placed one card face up, and of course drawing another card to get back up to six cards, the active player will then place a second card and everyone will go clockwise again, placing their second card. Once the players have all played two cards in clockwise manner like this, you'd then go to the discuss and vote phase, where the active player will actually discuss what the word was they chose and why their cards explain that word. So then that active player would announce the word out loud, say the word for this round was beach. Now nobody says anything else at this point. They don't uh, flip over their notebooks or anything. This player is just going to explain the cards. Well, this one clearly looks like a beach. I mean, it, it is a beach. Where here, we have someone that's actually sitting on a sand timer and you often find sand at the beach. And then going clockwise, each player will do the same. Now remember, some of the people actually have the word and they should probably be able to do a good job of explaining what their cards are. Uh, but one player does not, and they're going to have to listen to what other people say, listen to what the word is, and then try to figure out how to explain their cards in that way that relate to that word that they didn't even know. So in this case, this player says, hey, look, this is, uh, you know, there's a, definitely a pirate ship and stuff. Those go on the beach with maps and stuff. And then the beach always has a nice hot sun, so we played that one. And the next player might say, well, uh, I was thinking beach and there's water and there's obviously water always near beaches. Same thing here. This person was up on sort of this little uh, ledge where a door is, but there's water down there. So there's probably a beach around them. And this was the player all the way on the other side of the table. We brought it a little bit closer for you. And this player would say, well, this is the beach because there is some sand here that this is sitting on. And this is actually sort of a little bath and shower where there's water and there's always water at a beach. And this is a beach because the sun always hits the beach, just like that other player said. And it's actually going right into that flower's face. So the sun is like the beach and a sunflower. And the final player here says, well, this one's clearly at the beach. There's sand and there's water. And this is sort of like a squid, which you find in the water and you can find around the beach. Then everyone is going to vote. The active player never votes. The player to their left will start and will go in clockwise order until everybody except the active player has voted. Now, optionally, if your group would like to continue to talk and talk through some different things and call people out on certain things, that's quite fine. But you can go right to the voting at this point and sort of say why you're voting for someone when you do. Now remember, the detectives are trying to vote for the person they think did not have the word in their book. So this player, let's just say, votes for this player and says, you know what, I think it's you because, yes, there's water there, but I don't see sand, there's not sunlight, and this doesn't really look like a beach, it just looks like a scary place, I think it's you. And then this player says, you know what, I think it's this player because this isn't really like a beach, the sand's not really there, and this, this isn't really beachy, so I'm going to go here. And then this player will vote and might say, you know what, I think this player is the conspirator. There's no beach here at all. The pirate ship, they're, they're not at the beach, they're out at water, so I think it's this player. And let's say this final player agrees with uh, that this player is the conspirator. So once everyone has voted except the active player, everyone will flip over their notebooks and we'll see who the conspirator is. And then we can see this player had beach, this player had beach, this player had beach, this player did not. This was the conspirator. So now we're going to score. If the actual conspirator had two or more people voting for them, the conspirator has been caught and each player that helped catch them will get three points. And it's easy to remember because there's only three denominations of points in this game. And if you catch the conspirator, you're getting the smallest amount of points for three and you would put this next to your player board. But when you do so, you can flip it upside down so that people cannot see who has the most points throughout the game. And since Purple also voted and the Conspirator got caught, they would have gotten the three points as well. Now that would have ended the scoring for this round, but let's pretend that the Conspirator was not caught. So let's say this player has two votes, this one has one, and this one has one. So since the real Conspirator did not have two or more votes, they did not get caught. Now if the Conspirator did not get caught, they get the highest point value here of five, because it's the hardest thing to do is not get caught as the Conspirator. And they place it face down because points are always hidden. Now, if you remember, the active player didn't score any points when the conspirator got caught. That's because they only score 
if the conspirator did not get caught because they're trying to help that conspirator blend in. So if the conspirator was not caught, not only does the conspirator get the five points as we just showed, but the active player gets the four. And you can remember that because it's the second hardest thing to do and that's what they get. And so that active player would get that and flip it over. Then you would set up for the next round. You'd do so by discarding all those cards in a discard pile. And since you pick up a card from the draw pile every time you play one, you should all have six cards in your hand. The active player would then be the next one clockwise from the previous active player. They'll get the pencil and the notebooks. You'd start a new round going through all the phases I talked about previously. And in subsequent rounds, you'll want to make sure that you cross out the words above it just to make sure that everyone's clear what the word is for that round. Now this will continue as shown with each round the active player moving clockwise until with a six to eight player game, each player has been the active player once, then that will end the game. If you're playing with less than six players, each player will be the active player twice. And once that happens, that will be the end of the game. Then everyone will flip over their points. Whoever has the most points is the winner. If it's a tied, whoever has the most amount of point tokens will win. If it's still tied, you share the victory. Now there are a couple of game variants. One of them is a thematic game where before the first round, everyone can choose collectively a topic. And then the word for each round has to somehow fit in that topic. Maybe you do space opera or USA or protagonists or something more general like movies, countries, and literature, something that everyone agrees. And you can either change them each round or keep them for the entire game. You can also play a no discuss phase variant where nobody discusses or votes anything. As soon as everyone's played two cards, the voting starts immediately. Meaning the active player does not say the word out loud and the players don't explain their cards. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into Detective Club and get to the fun quicker than you normally would if you had to read the rule book yourself. Now, if you have further questions about the rules, I've placed a link below me in the description of this video, and that is the best place to ask them because not only will I be notified, but so will iGames. This has been the Game Boy Geek, helping you find and enjoy the next board game you'll love.